श्रुति स्मृति पुराणा आलय करुणाल नमा भगवत्द शंकर लोकशंकर शंकर शंकराचार्य केशव बादरायण सूत्र भाष्य वंदे भगवत पुनः पुनः ईश्वर गुरुरात्मे मूर्ति भेद विभागिने व्योमवत् व्याप्त देहाय दक्षिणा मूर्त नम सदा शिव सरंभा शंकराचार्य मध्यमा अस्मदाचार्य पर्यता वंदे गुरुपरंपरा ओ सहना सह नौ भुनक्त सह वीय वह तेजस्वी नवधी तमस्तुमाषा वह ओम शांति 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 ओ पार्थय प्रतिबोधिता भगवता नारायणेन स्वयं व्यासेन ग्रथिता पुराणिना मध्ये महाभारत अद्वैतावर्षिणी भगवती अष्टादाध्यायिनी अंबत्वासंदता भगवदीतेषिणी यं ब्रह्म भरुणेन्द्रुद्रमुता स्तुन्मती दिव्यस्तमयीसांगपदक्रमोपनिषद गायती यं साम ध्यानावस्थित तदेन मनसा पश्यती यं योगिन यम न विदुसुरासुरधना देवाय तस्म नम देवाय तस्म नम so those of you who joined late happy mothers day to all the mothers so few people sukanya bhagya deepa some of you joined late i think ami katao yeah anjali pinjala yeah i've got many um uh, uh, reena girase okay bhagya shri is joined us okay happy mothers day good i hope i covered everybody <coughs> so good uh, very important day very very important day so some people say that uh, why every day is mothers day so why should you have a mothers day i think some of you must have heard this argument and uh, so yeah there is some truth but we need we always also need a day to celebrate specially celebrate specially say thank you mom or whatever who whatever and uh, because we need those opportunities sometimes we 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 just because every day is mothers day means what every day i'm arguing with my mother that's not mothers day <laughs> i never say thanks to my mother so this uh, appreciation is so important we need opportunities more and more opportunities so happy mothers day to all mothers <clears throat> okay <clears throat> You are on verse twenty-one. All right. Ami Khata. Let's start with a mother here. A young mother. Yeah. So we are going to chant from verse number fifteen. Evam nyatva kritam karma. Evam nyatva kritam karma. पूर्वैरपि 
पूर्वतरम कृतम किम कर्म किम कर्मेति किम कर्म किम कर्मेति कवयोप्यत्र मोहिताः कवयोप्यत्र मोहिताः तत्ते कर्म प्रवक्ष्यामि कर्म प्रवक्ष्या मोक्ष्य से शुभात् शुभात् कर्मणोह्यपि बोध्यम कर्मणोह्यपि बोध्यम 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 च विकर्मण पश्चे अकर्मणि च कर्मय अकर्मणि च कर्मय स बुद्धिमा मनुष्य स बुद्धिमा मनुष्य सयुक्त कृत्न कर्म कृत सयुक्त कृत्न कर्म कृत ये सरंभा काम संकल्प काम संकल्प दग्धकर्माण तमाहु तमाहु नित्यतृप्तो नित्यतृप्तो निराशयो निराशीर्यतचिताग्रह शारीरम केवलम कर्म शारीरम केवलम कर्म कुर्वन्नापनोति किल्बिशम कुर्वन्नापनोति किल्बिशम सो विल चैन द नेक्स्ट वन आल्सो यद्रच्छा लाभ संतुष्टः यद्रच्छा लाभ संतुष्टः लाभ लाभ द्वंद्वातीद्वातीद्वातीद्वातीद्वातीद्वातीद्वातीद्वातीद्वातीद्वातीद्वातीद्वातीद्वातीद्वातीद्वातीद्वातीद्वातीद्वातीद्वातीद
<clears throat> so, since our beginning from verse number 18, Karmanya Karmaya Pashet, we had a long discussion. One who sees action in an action and one who sees actionlessness in action. And uh, we saw Sahab Diman, that person is a wise person, like that we saw. And from there, Krishna is telling more and more about that so-called, that wise person who knows what is what, who knows what Atma is. And we were looking at verse number 21. Nirashihi yatachitta atma tyakta sarva parigraha shariram kevalam karma kurvan Apnoti Kilbisha. This is what we were looking at. So Nirashi Gitadi, we saw that one who one who does not depend on hope. Nirashi. It's not that person doesn't hope. I hope things work out well. You know that we make that statement. But a person doesn't depend on hope. That person is called Nirashi. Yata Chitta Atma, one who has who has who is in full control, full mastery of one's, one's mind, one's senses. This is uh, an ongoing theme in the Bhagavad Gita. And then Tekta Sarva Parigraha, one who has you know given up, one who doesn't depend on positions. Everybody has positions, but one who has entertains no ownership. Big difference between ownership and possession. And uh, so we saw that. And we also saw Shariram Kevalam Karma. We were looking at that in the last class. And uh, one who does things only for maintaining the body, maintaining this or sustaining the body. That is the meaning of Shariram <coughs> Kevalam Karma. And so clearly here, what is who is being talked about is a sannyasi. Why? How do you say it's a sannyasi? It's, how do you say it's a sannyasi? It's a jnani for sure, wise person for sure, we know that. But also a sannyasi. Sannyasi jnani. That is a that we thought we have to understand that. Because shariram kevalam karma. It is only duty of this person, a sannyasi. Sannyasi means no duties. All the duties that were there have been taken away. The person doesn't have a family to take care of, children to take care of, parents to take care of, all that. All that the person, all those duties the person doesn't have. Okay. So somebody else is taking care of his or her parents. And maybe a brother is there, sister is there, whatever. So that person does not have any of these, those duties. That is why. That is why Shariram Kevalam Karma. That person still has a duty. The duty is to take care of the body. And uh, that is being said here. That, that gives us the clue that Krishna is talking about as sannyas. Okay. So, let's... Uh, so, here Shankaracharya raises a, an objection, technical objection. Says some people look at it as though shariram kevalam karma. So the karma, the actions performed by the body alone, okay, is what is meant here. But uh, so shariram kevalam karma kurvan apnoti kilbisham. Kurvan na apnoti kilbisham. Don't forget the na in between, okay? Kurvan na apnoti kilbisham. So Doing these karmas, the person does not gain any papam or punyam, the wise person. That is what is being said here. So, objection is, wait a minute, shariram refers to the body. Sharira means body. So, body karmas means whatever actions are done with the hands, etc., legs, all that will not at attract papam. But what about other karmas? What about speech? What about thought, mind? You know, mental things also, mental activities can be done. And you can plan things out. You can, we can do things. You can have 
good positive thoughts or we can have negative thoughts. What about all that? And those things will attract Papa. Like that, the Puro Pakshi says. But that is not acceptable because Kayena Vacha Manasendri Eva Buddhyatpanava Prakriti Swabhava, like that we say all the time. And so Kartritva is what is being talked about. Doership. Doership applies to all activities. Speech it applies to <coughs> activities done by the physical body and activities done by the mind. It's all, it's all the same. Kartritvam. There is no body kartritvam, mind kartritvam like that. And so that that discussion he brings in Adi Shankaracharya. Yeah. So we can, we are now ready to translate this shloka. So the way to look at it is like this. The verb. The verb here is apnoti. In the second line, the last, second word from the last is apnoti. That is the verb. Apnoti means gains. And then uh, gains. And then na apnoti does not gain. Correct? Does not gain. You have to latch on to the verb. You know, like a leech, you have to latch on. And then kind of hold on to the verb and then slowly build the sentence. I told you this before. And so, na apnoti does not gain. Who does not gain? Because the question arises, verb is not enough. You have to tell me the subject. Who does not gain? Well, hirashi, he. Okay. Is there any, any other subject here? Yes. Yata chitta atma. Any other subject? Yeah. Jakta sarva parikrata. Ha ha. So a person who is defined by these words, such a person, na apnoti, does not gain. Does not gain what? Kilbisham. Kilbisham. So Punya Papa. Does not gain Punya Papa. Okay. And then uh, when does that person not gain Punya Papa? Kurvan. Kurvan. Okay. Kurvan. Second line. Middle of the second line. Kurvan. Kurvan. Doing. Doing he does not gain. Doing what? Karma. Karma kurvan. Na apnoti. Correct? Karma kurvan. Doing actions. Any types of actions? Yes. Shariram kevalam karma kurvan. Na apnoti. Kilbisham hirashihi yatachitatma jaktasarva parikraha. That is the way to build a sentence here. So let's see. The person who is free from binding expectations Nirashi ji. Okay. Whose body, mind and senses have been mastered. Yata chittatma. The person who is free from binding expectations. Karma. Whose body, mind and senses have been mastered. Yata chittatma. <clears throat> comma who has given up all positions chakta sarva parikraha so it's better to say who has given up ownership all ownership because positions will always be there. And so, ownership is a better statement there. Who has given up all ownership. That means a person knows, I don't own anything. I don't even own my body. What is the question of owning this and that? There is a question. Kama, doing only action that sustains the body. Shariram kevalam karma. Kurvanne. Shariram kevalam karma purvan. Doing only action that sustains the body. Kama. Does not incur papam. Kilbisham na apnoti. Kilbisham na apnoti. Does not incur papam. The person who is free from binding expectations. Kama. Whose body, mind, and senses have been mastered, comma, who has given up all ownership, 
comma doing only action that sustains the body comma does not incur pap so the next shloka which we chanted yadri chala ba santushtah dvandvati to vimatsarah samasiddhav siddhau cha kritva pina nibadhyate so here a beautiful shloka given which expresses the spirit behind sanyasa so how does how does a sanyasi what is the life of a sanyasi like what is there in the mind of a sanyasi how does that person lead his or her life that question comes and so yadrichha labha santushtah it's a very 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 powerful expression of a sanyasi how a sanyasi leads a life that person does not work for food it he does not he or she does not make a special effort for food that is the meaning it, food and any other things also and uh, that is the meaning of this edricha labha santushta edricha means chance chance one who is happy santushta gaining whatever comes by chance means that person is not planning what should i have for lunch today what should i have for dinner what about tomorrow what about next week this and that the planning is not there no planning and those days bhiksha bhiksha a sanyasi is supposed to take live only on bhiksha bhiksha i don't know how to translate alms arms maybe but i'm not sure if that's a correct translation arms so bhavati bhikshan dehi very famous statement in our culture bhavati bhikshan dehi oh lady oh lady bhavati because because only lady can give give food a male he cannot go to a single house household where there's only single male no he can't he won't go because he himself may be struggling who knows and we don't know so they must be a happy family and the food that comes whatever little comes should come from a happy family that's his his or her idea so don't cause harm don't they should not think why this fellow is come again yesterday only he came and today also he is come no 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 they will not go to such houses give whatever happily and so that bhiksha that bhavati bhikshan dehi such a such a statement that is there etched in our in our psyche so edricha labha santushtah so that person takes whatever comes by chance accepts whatever comes by chance and uh, even for the basic necessities not uh, not big things not big smartphones and car and this and that no no basic necessities also this is the greatness of our culture sanyasa basic necessities the person will not be afraid of anything nirbhayam pratnoti therefore where is the question somehow food will come somebody might give food and whatever comes i will enjoy i am not going to pine up to this and that i have not had i have not had some i don't know what some gulab jamun in a long time nobody has given me gulab jamun no nothing like that just do what is to be done and whatever comes i'm happy to accept that so yadricha labha santushtah and dvandva tita dvandva tita we seen this this before also atita means one who has who has gone beyond okay one who is who is transcended using the word very carefully one who is above above what dvandva 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 is a very interesting word in sanskrit dvandva dvandva means pairs of opposites pairs of opposites and all life it is like that pairs of opposites so heat cold health if you want health then there is there is always ill health waiting you know and you can't you can't escape 
disease is waiting and uh, success you want success failure is waiting so like this this is this opposite pairs of opposites beautiful word dwandva that defines samsara samsara means dwandva and uh, so this dwandva chakra is there and constantly and you want cleanliness you want your room to be clean house to be clean ah, okay that means you are stuck rest of the life you are stuck because you have to constantly keep cleaning 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 and that's how it is and uh, cold and heat this is this is a daily thing because the heat is always constantly experienced you know you can sit and then and uh, it's hot it's hot it's hot so you have to do something about it you have to turn on the fan you have to turn on the air conditioner something like that and then sometime power goes off power goes off means what do you do and it's hot and in india it happens all the time so and then they have all this backup battery backup and all that all these things it's all big setup is there in india you should see and unnecessary setup because of the system system doesn't do things and then so everybody has a battery backup and uh, so that's there and then some people can't afford all these things many people can't afford so they have to have this uh, what do you call this this uh, hand fan we used to use this. in those days we used to you know there is a you have to keep the visiri ready panindru and for hours we used to do those days power cut means in hyderabad we used to blow up and it was hot in summer and burning hot and power goes off and you got to have this the strength must be there in the hand to keep doing this for a long time then you can switch okay this hand is hurting okay switch so keep on doing and everybody has to do because you can't rely on somebody else to do because that person also needs it you also need it so everybody must be an expert in this you can't say come on you come help me out here you know you can't do that and so this thing is constant and then what about winter winter you must be happy because it was so hot in summer no winter also i am not happy if it is too cold and uh, turn on the heater fire hey it is so hot here you complain about the same heat in summer now you winter you want this to be so hot that's very crazy of you no I, that's how it is okay so this is how it goes on and on in between a little few months spring they say spring then spring is supposed to be beautiful and uh, temperature is very nice very nice first few days is nice then we are afraid of summer after that agni nakshatram in india they say agni nakshatram and means you know what that may 5th may 5th or 6th agni nakshatram started means the summer peak summer is just just started it got to be burning and uh, so this is how it is dwandva ti dwanda dwandva this is how it is and uh, so we saw that earlier also we got introduced to it what in uh, chapter 2 verse number 14 matra sparshast kaunteya shitoshna sukha dukkada sukha dukkada he kaunteya the minute you've got sense organs and sense objects that's it the setup is like that you will have to be experiencing something or the other and uh, they are all this they, they give you this shita nushna cold and heat and sukha and dukkha therefore joy and sorrow both come along with it it's a package deal you can't you can't say i'm going to go somewhere else where i'll be only happy that possible there is no such somewhere else otherwise there'll be a big queue to go there and it's that such a place is not there and uh, so and also 15 also we say yamhina vyatayantyete yamhina vyatayantyete purusham purusha rishabha sama dukha sukham bhiram so mrutatvaya kalpate so sama sukha sama dukha sukham bhiram that person considers both as this matra sparshas to hey because i am endowed with sense organs this experience is going to be there and so i will take both as sama sama means same and as both are visitors and i i i i am i have the ability to take them as visitors and not be under their spell okay so that is a person here talked about dwandva titaha and uh, and also we saw um, second chapter verse number 38 if you look up 
सुख दुखे समय कृत्वा लाभा लाभो जया जयो सो अगेन ऑल दिस गंगवास कांस्टेंटली कृष्णा विल मेंशन दैट एंड उपनिषद्स आल्सो विल टॉक सुख दुखे समय कृत्वा ए कंसीडर बोथ दिस जॉइंट सारो एज ऑलमोस्ट आइडेंटिकल लाभा लाभो जया जयो विक्ट्री एंड डिफीट because arjuna the topic of victory and defeat war means you got is a big thing victory defeat and jaya jayo labha labho gain and loss everywhere there is a gain and loss every time you go to buy something you are thinking how do i negotiate in india you have to constantly negotiate you can't it's not like fixed price you know you go to the grocery store and everything is fixed and per kilo per pound whatever so here it's not like that you got to constantly what's the price of oranges what's the price of this okra and brinja and this and that you got to keep asking and then you have to decide is this is this the right price and uh, so on and so forth so sometimes you come back and say i got a great deal today and so so all that this person has grown out of all that is beyond that why because atma is not subject to all these things that person knows very well okay so <clears throat> so therefore so this is that dwandva atita okay now there is another word here vimatsara 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 means one who is free from jealousy okay where did we see the word matsara matsara Mm -hmm. some time ago we saw we we analyzed this word mm -hmm. some time okay it came uh, matsarya i think yeah matsarya so shraddha vanto na suyantaha muchyante tepi karma bih i think that is uh, third chapter 21st shloka yeah 21st correct तो ये में मतम इधम नित्यम नान उतिष्ठंति मानवाह सद्धा वंतो न सूयंता हा मुच्छंते ते भी कर्म भी like that he said that so there anasuya was mentioned and we talked about anasuya anasuya asuya means finding fault in somebody constantly finding fault oh he is not good she is not good oh that's a big show you know this this is this is called asuya and related to that is this matsarya jealousy that is the context where we saw it jealousy one is fault finding the other is jealousy and here he says this person is not jealous what is the connection between dwandva atita ha huh? and jealousy yadricha labha santushta okay means one who is happy with whatever one gets what is the connection between that and jealousy seems like so i say it's out of place seems like out of place okay so we have to we have to look at this a little bit so there are something called shad ripus six fold enemies six fold enemies of a human being and the, they say enemies are not out there enemies are all inside okay who are those enemies uh, kama kama binding desire krodha anger kama krodha lobha lobha is greed then moha 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 means here misplaced values false values we'll talk about these things okay kama krodha lobha moha mada mada means vanity boastfulness okay mada and then matsarya is the last one matsarya is jealousy kama krodha lobha moha mada matsarya this is called shadripu very famous shadripu in fact shanmukha you know subramanya swami is there shanmukha that six faces six heads are there for shanmukha as to and why six heads so that he can protect me from these six enemies you know shadripu like that we have these ideas and uh, so let's look at this kama so kama is what binding desire 
because we know that desire has to be there mandopina pravartate prayojanam anuddishya visadat even a even a mad cap dull witted person does not do things you think he is just aimlessly going around and saying things no but even that person shastram says has something in mind has some some purpose in mind and so so without purpose there is there nothing happens in this life so kama is binding desire a desire whose fulfillment is a must for me to be happy and if it's not fulfilled i'm going to be dejected i'm going to be depressed i'm going to be disappointed i'm going to be frustrated so why that is kama anything that falls in that category is called kama <clears throat> and uh, then krodha we saw kama krodha when did we see all these things dhyayato vishayan pumsaha sangaste shupa jayate sangat sanjayate kama desire comes when i dwell over objects things hey wouldn't that be nice to have wouldn't that be nice to have that shit over that seed is there gone inside the head now it's a matter of time before it germinates and small sprouts will start coming out okay so what happened we were talking about a chinese restaurant new chinese restaurant has come up when are we going to go there so that's it now it's a question of when not what what already germinated and so then this goes on then what sangat sanjayate kamah kamat krodho bijayate once that desire comes anger is not far away anger is there behind waiting to come waiting to come why because desire won't get fulfilled all the time and if it doesn't get fulfilled then what happens then you know who is stopping you from getting it fulfilled if it is rain that stops you from going there then you are angry at the rain you are because the rain gods this thing again you know this rain rain is so essential and you know the farmers just pray for rain and uh, those who are not in agriculture don't appreciate rain at all often times often i won't say i won't generalize that and so rain curse the rain otherwise what somebody there is always somebody we are always angry at somebody or the other why because our desire is not getting fulfilled and this fellow is in the way and so the one who is in the way becomes the target of my anger correct that is how this psychology works and so anger is the reflected beam of desire when desire is not fulfilled that reflection comes back to me and that's called anger and uh, therefore when i can't find a reason for my desire not getting fulfilled who do i blame god is there to blame god is there i blame god also because you are the one i've been praying to you all day all the mantras i've learned everything and gita bhagavad gita also i learned now i am chanting on these things and you you are not taking care of so god also poor god he also he is subject to my anger and uh, so that is that is kama and krodha then lobha lobha is greed greed <coughs> greed comes from insecurity just since i am insecure i feel insecure whatever i have is not enough and not, i can never feel secure and so basic insecurity is there and beyond that just uh, that thing i can't be happy with the things i have and so i can constantly want more and more and more and uh, i can't spend the money i have to on myself i can't spend on others i can't spend and so i want more and more thinking that it's going to make me secure how it's going to make me secure tell me insecure fellow already a billionaire and now what one more billion is going to make the person secure no cannot that insecurity will always be there and so that is greed greed comes from insecurity getting getting more for you is not greed and you are welcome to get what you want but my happiness depends on that that is a, that is that's wrong thinking basically and it won't work and so that is greed that is lobha lobha then moha moha sometimes we use the word delusion for moha but here 
we we are looking for false values so diluted delusion about values not clear about values not clear about what's right wrong not clear about the realities of life basic realities of life. false values and uh, so like for example money will make me secure money will make me happy false value so the society makes you think like that. and unless the bringing is very clear unless the parents really provide that value to the child the child will grow up thinking i will be happy if i get this much money that is a false value and, and totally false and uh, the, 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 the very important value also and uh, and then so he brings this up in his class being single means lonely you will be lonely you know i don't know about india india we don't have this idea and uh, you know grown up people maybe there is some stigma if they don't marry or something that is always there because everybody gets married and so if you don't if you remain unmarried then what then some stigma will be there but in our culture they grow out of that stigma and that respect for single people who are spiritual all that we have we have great culture we have but in america it's not like that being single means you've lost out and you can't have fun and poor you right and uh, so single means lonely and uh, that's a false value why because you, you have to look at married people all you have to do is interview a few married people and then find out that my god i am much better off than them you know this <laughs> is anjali and others are fine and so that is how much more proof do you need and we got to just be alert and watch out and this is not rocket science and so uh, false value that i must be married in order to be happy it is very important very important in our culture it's, a, it's an ashram okay but but false value thinking that that is that is a goal of my life etc and that's going to provide me all kinds of security i'm looking for etc is a false value okay because i can be lonely anyway i can be in the middle of lots of people i can still be lonely and the teeming millions are teeming and how can i i can still be lonely correct loneliness is out here not not out there and so therefore false value <clears throat> and uh, who just only gives this example i should say this he says attributing happiness to the color of your skin to the color of your hair okay he brings this up and he says that that idea is exemplified by the statement blondes have more fun how many of you have heard that statement blondes have more fun yeah i see a few hands there are raised so, what is the meaning of that means what that means you must look in a particular way the color of your hair and you know things should look should be particular way then you have more fun and so false value again these are all false values and uh, i remember once i was talking to uh, when i was in the us and uh, suddenly one person said i am i'm planning to retire on the beach front and beach front itself that word itself i had to figure out what beach front is i think beach front means you have to live on the beach somewhere a house on the beach that is how his idea of retirement was and house on the beach i used to wonder oh my god you know you know i need to learn a lot because i didn't hear all these things and uh, that's what i was thinking Uh, and so a house on a lake and uh, i have to retire in this particular location this particular city this particular state all these ideas are there people have that those ideas nothing wrong with any of those ideas but if you think that that is that is what that is the in thing if i don't do if i don't live in florida then i am no good i haven't i haven't my life is not i haven't made it you know like that if i think then i have a problem i am the one who have to suffer uh, with this kind of idea so 
there are some lucky people like Ramesh and Bhagishri ji that are living in Florida. Okay. We are happy for you. You know, when you live in Florida, we live in Florida. Through you, we live there. Okay. <laughs> so, um, so, but value and okay. preferences can be there. One can live anywhere and anywhere. all that is fine. No problem with that. But value, when it becomes a value, that is where we are stuck. Then it becomes, it becomes this uh, moha. It becomes moha. Understand the difference between a preference and a value. <clears throat> okay. So like this, we can give many, many examples. <clears throat> and uh, then, Kama, Krodha, Lobha, Moha, false values, Mada, Mada, Madaha. So this Madaha, this boasting about oneself, vanity, vanity. So presenting oneself as, as somehow better and uh, Look, I have accomplished this. You must see. I am a great person. That is called Mada. Presenting oneself as different from one, what one really is. That's called Mada. And uh, that also comes from the essence of insecurity. And a sense that I am not good. good. Okay. So, uh, see. <clears throat> I am not good enough. Okay. That's an idea. I am not good enough. Then I am not good. And then I am no good. Do you see a difference between these statements? I am not good enough. Okay. I am not good enough. In something I do, some things. Like when I cook, I am not good enough. Okay. That's fair. I am not good. Then I am no good. I am no good means what? I am just useless. Right? That is the meaning. It's a broad statement. I am not good. I am useless. That's a huge judgment on oneself. I am no good at all. And uh, whatever, whatever I do, I don't, I'm not successful. And I have a very low opinion about myself. Low self-esteem. I'm no good. Very low self-esteem. Very sad. So this self-esteem, you know, low self-esteem, it's so sad because it's, it's, it takes a lot of effort for that self-esteem to come up. It takes a lot of effort. And uh, we don't, the teachers in school, they don't teach us all these things. I never learned, at least in my, in my school days, I didn't learn all these things. So, a word self-esteem itself, I didn't learn. Where is the question? Some psychology has to be taught in all these schools and children must be exposed to these things. Because we learn all these, you know, com complicated sciences and so on and so forth. But, uh, this protecting the child, self-esteem protects the child as the child grows up and protects the human being throughout the life. Is it not? So important it is. Self-worth, self-esteem. And you can have all kinds of money if self-esteem is not there. You know, we can't sleep in the night. Every night is spent thinking about all kinds of things. I think something magic is going to happen. There's no magic that's going to happen. And so Swami sometimes he brings up this, this idea of self-esteem that you know all of us are told that you know we are we are no good, you know. My parents always say, Come on, you idiot, you're useless, you never did this. I keep on telling you, you never do it. So this never, never, and this and that, all this mantra keeps happening at home all the time. So the child is when the child is born, look at the psychology, when the child is born. The child has no idea of duality. Means it's born and it opens the eyes, it looks, and then there is somebody who comes and says, Ti -ti -ti -ti. No, it is a language between the parents and small kids is very different. And it's always in sounds, and some syllables come flying, and then uh, pa -pa -pa -pa. you know, all these languages we use. No, this has no meaning at all. But still, the child will smile. And the child smiles. And so, it makes you very happy. And uh, so, that child does not know she is my mother, he is my father, my brother, this boy is my brother. No, nothing. Child knows nothing. Zero. No relationship it knows. And then it slowly builds. And then, it has no idea of 
me versus the other. The idea of me itself is not there. Can you believe this? Idea of I is not there. And just something happens, I am there, and I, I feel hungry, and I cry, and then some, something comes, and I'm happy. This is all happens. This is all the child does. And just idea of I is not there. Then it grows up one year. Through that one year, of course, the identity builds. Builds. And then it begins to have lunch with everybody, and then you know, I want this, I want that, etc. I don't, I won't eat this, this, I don't like. All these things come, and then slowly it begins to see, okay, there are people. Then there is this terrible two. How many of you have heard of terrible two? Yeah, terrible two, they say. Hey, what is this terrible about two? The terrible thing is the ego builds up. The sense of I slowly comes and the sense of I, I am the only person in this world. I is there. Everything is I. And I, I want this, I want that. And the child goes to the store, I want this toy. And the mom says, no. No. And the child wonders, what? No. And uh, because the child doesn't have an idea of all these things. And the toy is there. I like it. Therefore, I want it. What is wrong with that? Mom says, no. No. Dad says, no. You should not touch it. And the child is confused. You should not touch it. What do you mean you should not touch it? There is a toy, beautiful toy. I want it. In fact, you got me here. Why should I not touch it? And so confused. Child is confused now. And it begins to wonder, oh, now I have to battle with all these egos. There are so many people out there. I thought I was the only guy. But there are so many people. So many egos are there. And so this battle, this battle starts. And that is a terrible too. And constant conflict. I, I, I am the one, I am the center of this universe. No, I am not the center of the universe. There is somebody who is who's power, more powerful than me, who overrules everything I say. So, constant harassment, constant, constant conflict. That's terrible too. Terrible too. Look at that. How the psychology works. You know, it would be nice to interview that two-year-old child. No, Interview that one-year-old baby. And see, tell us more about what's going on in your mind. But we have to infer. We can't interview. So we have to infer these things. So, Swamiji says that humiliation starts from age two. Okay? Because no, no, no. Shut up. You can't say all that here. And uh, this, this is constant. And so, therefore, the self-worth is already... It, from there, we have a problem. Self-worth problem starts. And uh, so... Then what happens? Mother. What is the connection between that and mother? When my self-worth is low, then when something good happens, I have to boast about it because something good has happened and uh, I've, I've, I've accomplished something. And so, see, look, look, look what I've done. Look what I've done. For a child, it's important. That's why when a child says, look, I've, mom, I've drawn something. Look at this. I've drawn a picture of a house. Means the child needs a little in a pat on the back. Yeah, great. You're, you're really good. You have to say that. And uh, <clears throat> so, so here, here, Mada means vanity. So, boasting about oneself. And that comes from this inferiority complex and uh, another type of insecurity. And uh, that is Mada. Okay. So, we covered how many? Kama, Krodha, Lobha, Moha, Mada, What's left is Matsarya. Matsarya is jealous. And uh, jealousy is very odd. It's an odd man out among these, these six. Why it's an odd man out? Everything else comes from my insecurity. And everything is my own problem. Desire is my own thing. Krodha is I am angry, etc. All that is okay. Now, this jealousy is... Somebody else is happy and I, I become unhappy. Somebody else is happy and because of that, I become unhappy. This is called jealousy, correct? Simple way of doing am I am I am jealous means what? I am sad that you have become successful. I am sad that your son got into Berkeley. Correct? Whatever be the reason. I am upset. I am jealous. This is how it is. So, it is very odd. That, hey, if you can't be happy, why don't you allow others to be happy? And at least, I mean, let us at least be surrounded by happy people. 
if I am not happy, at least if I have some happy people around me, ah, it's good. Life is better than otherwise. So, but this is odd, very odd. And so, so therefore, Krishna is singling out this particular jealousy, matsarya, and uh, and that that is uh, singled out because it seems to be the most illegitimate. Not allowing others to be happy, and not, not, you know, I am happy for you. In America, it is a very famous statement. I'm very, ha I'm happy for you. They say, I'm happy for you. So your son got a job. I'm happy for you. Your daughter got married. I'm very happy for you. So I'm, it doesn't cost anything to say I'm happy for you. And why don't you just say it? No, I'm not happy for you. That is jealousy. I'm not happy for you. Is jealous, correct? And. Uh, so, Krishna is singing out because this is called Upalakshana. Using one out of a group of things and using that one to represent everything is what is happening here. When he picks jealousy, he is picking everything else. And Kama, Krodha, Lobha, Moha, Mada and Matsarya. Matsarya being the most uh, serious of these things. That is why they say jealousy must be nipped in the bud. And if you, for that, we must be aware of it. You know, I'm having these thoughts of jealousy. I must be aware. Then I need to work on it. And so, otherwise, it will just consume the person. The person will be lost. Because it's one thing to say, I want to be happy. But now I'll be worried about everybody else who is successful. In my mind, they are successful. How do you know they are successful? And so, but anyway, I think they are successful and happy. And therefore, I become an act. So, it's a, it's a huge problem. And uh, so, Krishna uses the word Matsarya among these six Shad Ripus, six enemies, to represent all the six Shad Ripus here in this shloka, uh, to say that Vimatsaraha Sama Siddhava Siddha Ucha Kritva Apina Nibadhyate Kritva Apina Nibadhyate so what is the meaning of that? Kritva, doing anything, leading a life in whatever way, na nibadhyate, is not bound. Is not bound. We have already seen that before. And karmani abhipravrutopi naiva kinchit karoti saha. Not bound. Why is not bound? Well, he or she is not bound because atma is akarta. Akarta cannot be bound to anything. Neither to action can it be bound. Neither to the results of the action can be bound or to anything. Desires can be there, but never bound by desires. Okay. So, kritva api na nibadhyate. Badhyate means to be bound. So, let's translate this shloka. Okay. The one who is happy with whatever comes by chance. Yadricha lava santushtaha. The one who is happy with whatever comes by chance. Karma, who is unaffected by the opposites. Dvandva titaha, unaffected by opposites. That's a <coughs> much better statement than saying one who transcends opposites, one who is above opposites. All this, we don't have to bring these words above, transcends, etc. Unaffected is very objective. I am not affected by something. That is, uh, that's the idea is affected by the opposites. Free from jealousy, comma, vimatsaraha. And even minded with reference to success and failure. Samaha siddha siddhau asiddhau cha. That is how we should split that word. Siddhau asiddhau cha. Means in with reference to success. And with reference to failure. Of course, for a, for a person who knows there is really no such thing as success and failure, that's one thing. But if we still say, sannyasi also can have disappointments, can have, you know, simple desires are there if they're not met, then, you know, there can be there can, that the, the unmet desires are also there for a sannyasi, for a wise person. 
and so in that in those instances samaha even minded with reference to success and failure comma is not bound na nibadhyate is not bound even though performing action kritva api kritva api the one who is happy with whatever comes by chance comma who is unaffected by the opposites comma free from jealousy comma and even minded with reference to success and failure comma is not bound even though performing action so we'll stop with that some 36 okay Om पूर्णमदूर्णमिदम पूर्णा पूर्णमुदच्य पूर्णस्य पूर्णमादा पूर्णमेवशिष्य ओं शाति 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 हरि ओं श्रीगुरभ्यो नम हरि ओं